Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing on these little Chinese diesel air heaters. And the the subject of today's video is these little um, dosing pumps or metering pumps. Now, these little heaters have any sorry don't have any carburetor, so the only way the diesel gets into the combustion chamber is by one of these little dosing pumps, which pumps and forces a, a fixed quantity of fuel into the machine that is recognised by the ECU and controlled by the ECU. So these little, these little dosing pumps that um, come with these Chinese heaters are an electromagnetic pump. So the charge goes in here. Around here there's electrical wiring. So when a charge is put on here, a magnet is created there's a little piston inside here. The piston flies forward and shoots a metered quantity of fuel at the top here. Now, every one of these, the metered quantity of fuel is 0.02 of a milliliter. And as I've shown before, it's quite a small quantity. In fact, um, that's about 0.02 of a milliliter. To fill this teaspoon, which holds about five milliliters, will take 250 pulses of this dosing pump. So this piston will have to go up and down 250 times just to fill that um, that teaspoon. Right, to try and make it a little bit easier, I've done some drawings here. Now these, <laughs> these are my drawings. I'm not an artist, so if you don't like them, you just have to suck it up. But basically what you've got here, you've got the little metal piston inside the metal cylinder and you've got some non-return valves in here. So here is the, the dose limit. Now some, some of the machines you can actually screw this part down so you can increase or decrease by a, a puffteenth of an amount. The diesel comes in here up into this chamber. When the magnetic pulse is fired, when this, you, the magnet is energized, the little pump flies to the top and as it flies to the top, the diesel in here is pushed out and up into the, um, I suppose, up towards your, uh, your burner up here and pushed along the line. When the, the current comes off the magnet, then the spring pushes it back down. So as the, the spring pushes it back down, um, the fluid from here now comes up into the top chamber ready to start all over again. So it just up and down, up and down, up and down. Now it pulses from about oh, 1.6 to 5.5, um, maybe up to 6 if you really boost it times per second. And it makes a ticking sound, tick, 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 as it goes. Now, one issue that we have with it is as the piston flies up, it creates a low pressure area here in this chamber down here. And so it creates what we'd quite probably call turbulence. And so it's a low pressure turbulence in here. And when this happens, what happens is tiny little air bubbles are formed. And as I said before, a bit like popping a champagne bottle, you, t you relieve the pressure. So the little air bubbles come out of solution or like a scuba diver, and um, I used to teach the, this to my students in years gone by, is if you come up too quick, the dissolved gas in your tissues and your bloodstream can come out of solution and form little bubbles, and those little bubbles then track along and create what we call decompression or, or um, the bends. Now, the bubbles are quite normal in these, so they're little tiny bubbles and they're always formed. Now, this is why it's so important to mount these little pumps in a vertical manner. If you mount them on the side, the bubbles can't escape. And what will happen is the bubbles will then start to form up in here and form a big bubble, which will not only then create troubles with the dosing rate, but because you've, you've got no lubrication up here, now the, these pumps work on lubrication from the diesel. They don't have a separate oil lubrication like in a motor car vehicle they use the diesel to form the lubrication. So if you've got a big bubble up here, you're interfering with the dose and you're also creating wear on the piston. 
and instead of the getting the normal tick 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 it'll go wok 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 and it's very if you hear that sound that wok 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 sort of sound instead of tick 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 sort of sound you've got air in it now I have seen one ant put upside down well <laughs> it's never going to work properly ever okay okay I've sliced this little dosing pump open so the diesel comes in here and out the top here now here you can see the the copper windings for the electromagnet so when current is put onto here and it takes about 2.5 amps to energize this this energizer becomes magnetic and the little piston here flies up boom, and then comes back so the little piston up and down up and down up and down up and down and there's little springs and non-return valves in here to push it back so each time the piston flies up it shirts out 0.02 of a milliliter out of here and we have this constant ticking sound tick 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 sort of sound now because of that particular sound what you need to do is you need to isolate the pump and you they'll come with these um, rubber mounting brackets and this then is mounted to the I don't know the hull of your boat or the side of the caravan or, or motorhome and it tends to isolate out the, that ticking noise it's very important that you don't hard mount these these units now on on our boat in the med we actually have the the, um, the little pump mounted in a spider web of of rubber so it's got a spider web of rubber coming out and suspended in space a bit like in a, in a cobweb and that is so good that we can hardly hear it when it's ticking the other thing that you have to be aware of too is that not only isolate the pump but the fuel system comes in one of these little hard nylon tubes and it will also make a ticking sound so as the, the fluid pulses through it will also tick so not only do you have to soft mount this but you have to soft mount the tube so you don't mount this where it can bang against the, uh, the wall or a cabinet or something because it will transmit the, that sound through into your, um, your motor home or your caravan or, or your boat. Okay, the next thing I'd like to um, talk about is filtration. Now, these have a, a very, very tiny bore size. In fact, it's so small that you you can't even put a matchstick up in there unless you round off the edges to get the matchstick up in there. So it's it's about point uh, sorry about three three millimeter diameter. So any crud in the diesel is going to jam up in the filter system. Um, it's going to create problems in your pump. It's going to uh, get stuck around in here in the in the um, the piston area. So you, you need a decent filtration system. Now, these units come with two basic types of filters. You've got this type here, which is a paper filter, and you've got this type here, which is a, uh, a stainless steel screen mesh filter. You will have to put some sort of filter in. Now, in, in the genuine Ebus batcher, they have this filter. It's so tiny, I've got to pick it up with a pair of tweezers. Now, that is the surface area this tiny little bit here and that's in there that's in the the dosing pumps of the the german ebus batcher and that's what they use for their filtration system now all i can say is you people in germany don't appreciate what wonderful quality diesel if you can run diesel that is so pure that you need a all you need is a filter like this then you <laughs> <laughs> then you have excellent diesel. For the rest of the world, we get crud in our diesel, um, particularly in the in the marine field. And the first thing you need to do is, uh, if you've got one of these in a boat and on the Ebus batcher, you unscrew the bottom and the and the filter comes in here. So the first thing you need to do is you you undo that and throw the filter away because in the marine field we have trouble. We have trouble with uh, 
um, diesel bug we have trouble with um, crud coming in from the the little mini tankers that bring us our diesel and we just don't have clean clean diesel in the marine field now the the dosing pump is not strong enough to to suck it through the normal filtration system that we have in a marine application so we use this now we've got with this this here gives better, better filtration the paper filter but you do have trouble in winter time with the gelling of the diesel um, or if you've got biodiesel coming in and blocking the paper filter so an all-around type is this stainless steel sort of mesh filter but if you're um, in a boat or a marine application probably this sort of filter this larger filter is better so it's got a very big surface area now this little one here it's got almost so, no surface area <laughs> and so it's just it's absolutely useless and it'll cause blockage in your pump straight away now some of these pumps come with a um, an arrow telling you which direction the pump uh, the diesel comes through the filter so same as here got a direction but these ones here don't and I've seen a few on eBay they've mounted them back to front if you're not sure and it doesn't have an arrow the diesel the inlet side of the diesel always comes to the outside of the filter so it comes in and on the outside of the filter you never put the diesel in here which then goes onto the inside of the filter because it'll just block up on the inside of the filter here it comes to the outside and then will fall to the bottom now it's probably that filter is why I think eBuspatcher recommend that you mount their, their pumps on a between a 15 and 35 degree angle so you mount them like that rather than vertical and this is the only reason I can see why you wouldn't mount these vertical the only logical reason I can see and I've written to eBuspatcher in Germany a, a couple of times but I've never received a reply but what happens is eBuspatcher probably put this up they found that the best system here is that because they've got this little filter in here that if you've got a blockage in here then any crud will fall back down and can block up because remember this is only three millimeters so it's only this size here but if you mount it on its side you're still allowing the air bubbles to come out but any crud now will fall down into this corner here and not down and block up the inlet so that's the only reason that I can see that Ebus Batcher would have done it this way now not only did the Chinese copy the, um, the German design D4 diesel heater but they also copied their manuals and you can see a lot of the things from the, the German manual is in the Chinese manual and they've just copied over that you should mount these you know 15 to 35 degrees but as I said I can see no reason and the, the, the more vertical you mount them the more you're allowing the, the little air bubbles that are formed by this cavitation in here to escape and the same when you when you prime the the um, the filters you should try and try prime them in a vertical manner get all the air out and then after that then it doesn't matter if you mount them sideways the next thing I'd like to talk about is is um, initial priming of your your setup now on the controllers, the, all the different types of controllers, there is a setting that you can, by pushing the two button buttons, you can have a manually control of the priming system. So you can use the little heater to prime your, your, um, your initial startup. But my advice is don't do it. And the reason is, is that, as I said before, you've got the little piston in here running up and down, and the lubrication is by the diesel. Now, for instance, if you have one of these small filters in your system then what's going to happen is it's going to take probably oh, I don't know 1500 pulses to fill that so th that that filter there is about 15 to 20 milliliters so without going into the the actual fuel line and everything this here now each time it goes up it comes back again so I call it strokes against the wall so up one and down so each pulse has two strokes so this will have to come up and down 3,000 times 
just to fill this filter, let alone, you know, fill up your line or anything like that. If you use one of these larger ones, then you're looking at probably, you know, 11 to 15,000 times for the, this little piston to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, as I said before, the lubrication is from the diesel. You don't have a separate lubrication like you do on a motor car. Now, how <laughs> do you think this little piston is going to feel going up and down, you know, probably three to 5,000 times for a normal filter, you know, maybe up to 15,000 times for a, um, a larger filter? And it's, it's rubbing on rubbing. Now, you just get your skin here and rub, 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 and you do that 15,000 times with no lubrication and no, no oil on your skin and no, um, you know, I don't know, <laughs> olive oil or whatever you, you want to put on your skin and see what your skin's like after 15,000 rubs on it. And the same with these little filters. So my advice is prime and manually prime, not with the filter, but um, you know, you can do it as, a, you can get a little priming bulb or you can, you know, if you're, um, I suppose, a, a millennium, you come from the country or if you're a kid that's brought up on a, uh, on a farm or what we would call in Australia a, a blokey sort of person, then <laughs> what you would do is you would, you would just <laughs> suck it. <laughs> And prime it and you get it up get it up to the um, you could see the fluid coming up in here put your finger over it and push it on at least then you've got the the, um, the filter fully primed you've got all the hose primed up until the pump and so the pumps only got to just suck it then up this little bit here and then it's got lubrication and away now before everybody jumps on my back about you know <laughs> telling me self priming look by all means, you do it how you think you should do it. This is just a guide and, um, you know, get your own ways of priming it and, and uh, you know, you could use, I suppose, you could use a, um, you know, the squeeze bowl that you use for uh, outboard fuel or you can use a pump that um, people will extract oil out of a differential, any, any way that you want. But uh, as I said, um, a country guy will do the simple way and, uh, and um, he'll manually he'll manually prime it. If you use this to prime, a, particularly a, a, um, through a big filter or even a small filter, and this thing here is running up and down, you know, you know, three to five thousand, eleven thousand times. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that you're going to cause wear in the poor little pump. Okay. Recapping, there are electromagnetic pump. The dose rate on these is 0.02 of a milliliter. The pump in here is a little metal piston running up and down in a, in a, in a cylinder. It's energized by current coming in here making an electromagnet. It flies up and down here. It, as it does that, it makes bubbles in the bottom and if you mount it in a vertical manner, these bubbles permutate to the top and out and they go into the burn chamber without any problem. It will make a normal ticking sound if it's in upright, if it's got no, no bubble stuck in it. If you mount it this way, you'll get bubble formation, large bubble formation, it'll make more of a clacking sound. When you mount them, you, you rubber mount them to, to um, isolate out that noise and you also isolate out the, uh, the fuel hose. All right, I hope that helps a little bit in your understanding of these uh, metering pumps and um, helps you in your own installation and understanding of these uh, little diesel air heaters. All right, thanks for watching.